Hey, you going YouTubers and welcome to the channel. So this footage you see here is about a fortnight after my most recent video, which would have been spraying the Resto Finish Polychroma on this HQ sedan. So to make a long story short, I put this one into storage and I got stuck into painting some stuff for my brother and now it's finally time to start putting them back into this one. So if you've seen the previous episode in this series, you would have seen I put two coats of poly primer on top of the boot lid, the roof, uh, the bonnet, and basically the lower halves of the, of the side of the car and three coats across the top. And basically what that's allowing me to do is get a nice build over the top of my repairs and I'm actually able to really fine tune some of those repairs, get rid of some of those block marks, which you might've seen in the previous episode that I keep on mentioning. And basically really just dial in on some of the, uh, some of the harder areas to, um, to body work. Now, if you've been a long time follower of this car, you would have seen, I had those paper templates of the reverse curves on the tops of the panels. I'd done them before I'd actually done any body work on this car because they were actually in pretty good condition. And basically I just wanted to do a little bit of refinement work on them in the bodywork and priming stages. So what I'll do with them is, is I will actually hold up the template with a magnet, put a little bit of guide coat on, mark out my tape, so where I need to stop sanding and vice versa on the other side. So you might notice I create a little bit of a valley with my tape and I'll guide coat in the center of that. And basically what that will do is that will allow me to sort of dig out that area uh, for lack of better words, and make that area straight before I continue on with the rest of the panel. Now this video here, I will just be focusing on just the driver side of the car because in my opinion, this was the side that gave me a little bit more grief. So the other side actually body worked up a little bit easier. So for most of this, I've been using the linear sanding blocks where I can. There has been a few areas where I've had to resort to some foam sanding blocks, mainly around like those wheel arches, that kind of thing. That reverse curve in the tops of the panels, I've actually been using a little bit of PVC pipe for that, so nothing too high tech for that, but it's certainly done the job on this one, not too bad so far. Moving on with the block sanding, here I am block sanding panel to panel on the doors. So make my way through it pretty quickly. This stuff, like I said, it's about a fortnight uh, since I sprayed it, so it's had plenty enough time to cure. Um, I know this stuff can get a little bit hard to rub if you sort of leave it for a fair bit of time. Now this driver's side door here, I did kind of notice, I could catch it in the reflection, I'm not sure if anyone else saw it in the video, but it was just a little bit of a wave just in the center. Um, this door did have quite a large repair done to it, so I was sort of holding my breath thinking, oh, I might have gotten it, but I don't think I did in the end. And like you guys can see near here, um, I've broken back down to my filler work and there's a little bit of a low spot in the middle. Alright, so I've just been blocking down this side with a bit of 180 and a little bit of 120. Now these panels, so the boot lid, lower halves of the doors, lower quarter, that sort of stuff, they only got two coats on them, so they haven't got a whole lot. Tops of the quarters got, or tops of the panels got three coats. And I've noticed a few little low spots in a few places. Most noticeable ones probably in the center of this door right here. I reckon my filler work must have just been a little bit high either end. Um, so I've given that a little bit of a chop down with some 180. Uh, I've gotten to it at a point where it is now. I think if it probably had four full colts on it, probably would have filled in that low spot in the middle and I could have chopped down that high spot either end. But like I said, it's only got two coats on it. So I'm gonna give that a little bit of a prep up and I'm gonna wipe some filler in those areas. So what have we got here? Some, uh, some 120. So that's pretty good for filler to stick to. So we'll just give them a little bit of a scup up. Doesn't need a whole lot. Log boards are looking pretty atrocious. That needs a bit of a birthday, I reckon. Shake that down to the bottom. This one's getting pretty low. I usually sit these upside down so the filler runs down in, but must not have... There's plenty for that. A little bit harder. Atrocious. Uh, 
not looking a little bit more. That's better. Getting any easier on the knees. Really beautiful Mario. Now that type of body mount camera filming footage kind of stuff, I'm not sure if I'll keep persisting with that because I don't really think it's turning out all that great. I do get a little bit of better footage later in the video, but yeah, it's just one of those things. It's very tricky to do while you're trying to do this work. But again, moving on with the job. So same kind of stuff as I did on the rear quarter, I'm doing with the front garden door. So I put my template on, taping it all down, sort of around where that um, where that kind of valley is, that reverse curve is, a little bit of guide coat, put a little bit more tape down, and then basically creating that valley with the bit of PVC pipe. Now you do have to be very careful when you're actually doing that because it's seriously so easy to um, really dig a hole into the panel uh, so you really you have to be pretty accurate with um, with your sanding and yeah, not sand in one spot for too much otherwise you will end up with a really big low spot right in the middle of that reverse curve and yeah it does not look good but as you can see I will actually run a little bit of tape in the middle and then I'll block away from that so I can sort of lessen that blow or lessen that sort of hollow in the middle and kind of blend it in a little bit but still have it there in the panel now I haven't really spoken about it much on this channel, but what I'm doing here is I'm wet checking it. So basically I'll, I'll get a rag, or you can use a spray bottle as well, but I'll just, I'll wet that down with Prexel and I'll run that over the panel. And what that does is it just, it gives you a nice sheen so you can actually see in the reflection, um, the repairs that you've blocked out. Now, even though I am just doing just that side of the car, I decided that I would block my adjacent panels so I could get my panel to panel blocking right uh, at this stage rather than later down the track. So I've given this top side of these panels a bit of a rub. So the top of this door and the guard, a little bit on the bonnet, that kind of stuff. Chopped in my, my body line, so the reverse curve. Got a little bit of a low spot here in the middle, but I think because I'm gonna re-prime this, I'm just gonna leave that one. Um, this spot here and this spot here, I might just put a little bit of filler in now, just because they are a little bit easier to sort of get. I think if I go and try and wipe some filler into this, even though it is very, very shallow, might end up kind of losing that body line so I think it might just be better if I just put a few more coats of the rest of the finished poly primer on it and then block out that repair but these ones I'll put some filler in so I'll just give those areas a little bit of a chop up with some 120 sometimes I just like to put a little circle around them like that just so I can see where they are so I don't lose where I'm going to put my filler. Hard to film this stuff.
So with that filler drawing off, I decided I would focus my attention on the lower half of this guard. Now there's a few tricky areas in these guards, mainly around the wheel arch. You may notice a few points that I do break out the old broom handle stick, uh, wrap that up with a bit of sandpaper and I find that kind of finds its way nicely in around that sort of uh, curve of the wheel arch lip. So back on these little repairs now that they've hardened up, just using some 120 on a sanding block just there, nice little hard sanding block, and then follow it with a little bit more guide coat, slightly larger sanding block with a bit of 180, and that sort of finishes it off nicely I find. Now the filler that I put into those spots is the 3M Platinum Plus guys, for anyone who's wondering. And I was actually quite surprised, sort of just working into the resto finish polypromer that it actually did sand up very similar, so it was really good over the top of that. I found the two complemented each other really well because, like I said, they do sand very similar, so yeah, it's not like you're um, you're going to take away from your poly primer really easily while you're trying to chop the filler work down. Now at this stage I'm getting pretty close to re-priming, so I just thought I would take this opportunity and just re-guide coat and make sure I'm 95% happier with those reverse curves on the tops of the panels there. But anyway, back on with the job. So what I'm doing here is I'm just getting ready to mask up, or I am masking up I should say. Now I find masking up sort of just one of those jobs where it's sort of a little bit relaxing. Um, a lot of people find it annoying, but I kind of take a little bit of pride in masking up. Now masking with plastic can be a little bit tricky sometimes I've found. Um, I am more inclined to using the paper, but because I am only painting one half of the car, this is where plastic definitely reigns supreme. So I mean, just personally, while I do find plastic to be a little bit quicker, I do find it also a lot easier to quickly cut a bit that you don't need to cut or you know, it might rip or um, yeah, you might put a tape in the wrong spot and then you might try and peel it back off and it'll rip a hole in it. And yeah, in that aspect, I much prefer paper, but for speed of things, plastic is definitely the way to go, especially if you're just doing, you know, one side of a car like I am here. But yeah, that's just personal preference really. Um, like I said, I do much prefer to use paper. I just find it a little bit more user friendly. Um, but yeah, that's just my opinion. Now there's a little bit of footage upcoming where you'll see the plastic around the windows and the wheel arches and stuff. You'll actually see that they're actually pulled a lot tighter. I actually ended up using a heat gun on them just to sort of shrink the plastic a little bit. But anyway, here's the fun part, actually spraying the primer on. No one really likes doing the prep work. Well, most people don't. I sometimes enjoy it, sometimes I don't. But yeah, that first coat, sort of putting it on, sort of light to medium, sort of just want to get a nice grab, a nice seal over those repairs. There was a few little rub throughs down to epoxy and um, also some of my previous filler work that I'd done, not a big deal. Light coat over it, seal it off nicely. Um, that first coat, you sort of, you're not looking for a huge amount of build on that. Uh, not that I really needed at this stage anyway, because a lot of the repairs I did actually block out, so this is basically just to give me something to rub when it comes to the time of actually prepping this car up for paint or high fuel primer if I decide to go that way. Should be a surprise to anyone, I did have a few gun issues again on this one. Um, I've noticed this Eyewater AZ3 starting to spray a little bit bottom heavy, um, so I think it might be a little bit past year is by date. I have had it for probably four or five years maybe, I reckon probably about four years. Um, so yeah, it's definitely had a hard life. Uh, I'd hate to know how many litres of paint and what like, primer epoxy, whatever I've sprayed through it, but yeah, it'd be getting up there for sure. But yeah, I mean, it's not really a big deal. I mean, I think they were about 220 bucks when I bought this gun. Uh, I think they've gone up slightly um, since then. I think they're around 250, but yeah, it's just one of those things. I'd, I don't really want to spend the money on it um, for this primer. Like at the end of the day, I, I, all the primer that I spray, I'm going to be rubbing on, rubbing it anyway. So yeah, it's kind of just one of those things. I don't want to spend money on at the moment. Yeah, anyway, I mean, like there was only really one spot where it really affected me and I ended up getting a little bit of a run, but at the end of the day, it's all going to be rubbed off anyway. So yeah, it's not a big deal at all. Now this lower quarter that I'm priming up now, I probably didn't need to spray anything on that, but I just thought I'd put a coat over it It'll fill in those 180 scratches, so if I do decide to paint directly over the top of this primer, um, I'm not going to be sort of battling to get any of those 180 scratches out. I can basically just go 320, 500, and then 800, and not have to worry about any of those 180 scratches coming through. Looking back at this footage, I probably should have moved the tripod because this angle is absolutely terrible, so I do apologise for that. Um, yeah, when you're doing the work, it's it's not really on your mind to be moving cameras around that kind of thing. It's yeah, it's a little bit tricky. I suppose I just need to train myself to actually do that. But 
yeah, it's not the worst thing in the world, I suppose. In a second, I will actually end up moving the camera, and yeah, you'll see me spray that end of the car anyway, so yeah, I got there in the end. So this is the second coat. I only ended up putting two coats over this side. Um, I didn't really need to fill in a whole lot. Um, I was pretty confident just looking down the side of things as it was wet, even after that first cut, it looked pretty good to me. So I'm pretty confident I should be able to block out at least 98% of what's there, or what was there before I put this round of primer on, I should say. That makes a little bit more sense. Now, I did only end up mixing up a litre of this primer. So I didn't have a whole lot mixed up, and I didn't really want to put a whole lot on this because I don't think it really needed it. I basically just wanted to seal off those small repairs and give a nice even coat over the whole lot. And you'll see sort of at the end of this footage here that I do actually run a little bit short just on the top of that uh, quarter panel at the back there. But I'm not really too worried about that because I could just see a few little bits and pieces here and there. So I may end up just doing a little bit of a spot prime just on that top of that quarter panel. So not a big deal. Um, I can spot that in when I do another part of the car. It's just one of those things, like it could just be the slightest little block mark that you might miss and you'll prime over it and then you'll go, oh, that looks a little bit bit average. But at the end of the day, like it is this primer, um, extremely high building primer at that. So a lot of the stuff that I might have missed, I'm definitely gonna be able to fix or, you know, I'll be able to fix it at least before paint. And that's fine, I'm not worried about that. Like, because at the end of the day, this is still in primer, so like, if there's something that I have missed, I can just go back and fix it. Simple as that. Like it's it's not it's not a big deal, not to me anyway. Um, I'm sure there's probably some people out there who think you know you can just body work an entire car and pick up everything at that one point. And I mean, hey, there probably is, but you know that's not me. I'm still learning. You know, like, it is what it is. I don't absolutely hate that it is what it is mentality, but you know what? Sometimes it is what it is. Except when it isn't, and then you've got a problem on your hands. But hey, that's a story for another day. Currently, I'm still mastering my craft. I'm still learning, I'm still practicing. Yes, I am practicing on a car. Yes, no, I haven't just gone and got a, a wreck panel, you know, because I, I, I don't believe you can completely repair a car and say, you know what, I did that 100% perfect, because it just doesn't happen. Um, there's always gonna be something that you're unhappy with, and you know, I, I think I've come to accept that. But I also have it in my mind that, you know, I'm given all I've got. I'm trying to do the best job as I possibly can and yeah that's what it is but anyway enough of me rambling this is after it was I would say probably about 98% dry so one thing I love about this primer is it has a really glossy finish on it so you can have a really good look at all your body work and stuff like that and, and I can see it now there is a few little block marks here and there but it is like so much better than what it was because before it was a little bit choppy in a few areas um, and mainly that's just because I couldn't see what I was doing you know with the all different types of fillers and stuff on the panel I mean it's it's hard to see when it's a little bit disguised like that but now that it is all one color I can see what it is oh yeah don't forget to like and subscribe I love you